Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to the long-awaited episode of Stunt Memory Acts 2023. It's been a while. We have not been on the couch together. This is my very first Stunt Memory Acts. Ren is the Whoa. special guest. <laughs> Hell yeah, Ren. I have been trying to be on this couch for this show for four years now, and I finally get the chance. So I'm excited to show you guys a clip that I've been really wondering about today. Oh! Wait. I think they stitched it. Mm. I, I don't think see a stitch. Jumps. This is Donnie Yen being Donnie Yen. Ooh, across the face. I have a clip from what is deemed perhaps the most dangerous film ever made. This is stunts only because it's, there's a camera. <laughs> <laughs> 70 crew members were injured. No way. What? Film. Yeah. I think once you see what the movie's about, you're like, oh, just 70? <laughs> <laughs> The closer you'd get to them, the more they'd like you, the safer you'd be. But look! Yo, it's a lion. It's a bunch of lions. It's a, it's a whole pride. So the guy in the blue is Noah Marshall, who is the director and writer and producer of this movie, and he acts in it as well. Dude. The story behind this movie is crazy. The lead actress from The Birds, Tippi Henderson, and her husband, Noah Marshall, went on a, a safari. They're like, they're really inspired. And they're like, let's make a movie about lions. And just like, what well, if there's like a, a house where they're doing research, like Jane Goodall, except instead of monkeys, it's lions. Oh. And they're like, I love that idea. Let's get as many lions as we can to raise them from cubs so they're comfortable around people, which by the way, this is in Sherman Oaks at their house. Uh, and the, the government was like, you can't do this. So they got uh, a bit of property up in Soledad Canyon and built this, this ranch, effectively this big cat ranch. So this is kind of like his mad experiment, right? And you can see the actors like, Nah, he's like genuinely nah. uncomfortable <laughs> with yeah. the scene. It's just playing, I'm telling you. But you could get killed. The cat's got a little excitement. <laughs> <laughs> no. He just dropped. <laughs> Not them deciding they want to jump him. Hearing him trying to deliver his lines like, these guys are just playing around. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> Yo, they don't know how to go easy. They're just like, here you go. Here's all 190 pounds of me. Cats, as we know, if you have a pet cat, are basically fun little cuddly things with razors on the edges of them. And so everybody's constantly getting cut. Everybody's constantly getting bit. I'm going to tell you more about this. Let's just watch okay. a little scene here. Yeah, just... I got to go help your uncles. They're killing each other. This is insane. <laughs> this is absolutely insane. This is stunts only because it's, there's a camera. <laughs> <laughs> ah, they, they, oh, you want to go? <laughs> yeah, all right. Look and at his look, hand. His, look at his hand now. He just got cut. His hand yeah. went limp. And just, dude, that lion's claw just slaps his hand and slices it open. And you can tell he's like, ouch. <laughs> he's like, I'm like, cut. <laughs> It's hard to find articles about this that are like not sensationalized because they're all written as if like lions attacked and mauled. So right, right. It's like the lions aren't attacking anyone. No. If the lions were attacking somebody, they'd be dead. But it's, you know, it is cinema. They're faking it. The lions are playing roughhousing. They're, right. not, they're not trying to like eat how, the people. how you would play with your dog. Right, exactly. You're just, it's, you're just dealing with the natural consequences of being in close proximities with the lion. <laughs> the director of photography is Jan de Bont. Really? The man who directed Speed and Speed 2. No way. Yeah. He got scalped by a lion I was about to in this say, movie. Did he get hit? Did he get oh, yeah. So he had, they, had a, they had a scene where he dug a hole with the camera. We wanted all the lions to run by. Yeah. And so they filmed the scene of the lions going by. And he turns to get the shot because he's, he's the kind of guy who gets the shot, right? Right. And the lion's like, what's that? And scalps the entire back of his head. And oh, it's all hanging forward. So he had to go to the hospital no. and get it all stitched back on. Oh, my God. And it's experiences like that that made the man that shot Speed 2 Cruise Control where they crashed Crash. a boat into a, an actual fake town. We, we saw that on, when Jordan Allen brought in yeah. on VFX yeah. Artist Reactor and like, what kind of man would ever do something this insane? It's like, oh, the kind of man who shot a movie with 150 lines. Oh lines. my God, that many lines! <laughs> it's like, it makes a lot of sense now. Like on one hand, this is such a unique gem of a movie. On the other hand, it's really irresponsible. <laughs> really kind of, they probably didn't feel like they were exploiting the animals, but the same time it is exploitation of animals 100%. but at the same time the director is the one there right. in the shot too so it's like it's one thing to be like i have a crazy idea you go do it right so they be like i have a crazy idea i'm gonna I'm go do, do it, do it. Right. i have a crazy idea follow me <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> maybe i can admire the dedication while still not admiring the ways in which it was mm -hmm. done execution yeah, yeah. so th you would, would you consider this stunt work um no i would not i'd I would agree with you this hazardous work this is 
<laughs> this, out of my wheelhouse. Don't call me. <laughs> so this is <laughs> <laughs> like Don't these actors me. are just. It's a full send every shot. It's like I'm full sending. Yeah. Even like, though I'm just standing next to like, a tiger. I'm just like at all times I'm worried. That's so much stress and anxiety. <laughs> Honestly, I think they're lucky no one died. They are. I would say they're lucky that the lion, that one of the lions didn't flip that switch and go into your right. food mode. What's up guys and welcome back to Producers React to Great and Ready to Eat Meals. Today's sponsor is Factor Meals. Our box just arrived and it's lunchtime, so I'm gonna heat one up and tell you a little bit more about it. So I'm going with the jalapeno lime cheddar chicken bowl. This is gonna be super easy to microwave and ready to go. While that's cooking, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about Factor Meals. On a weekly basis here at Corridor, we produce a ton of content that we are constantly working on and there's not a lot of time outside of that. So Factor Meals is a perfect meal service because they meal prep your meals delivered right to your door. Not to mention, Factor Meals are designed by chefs and dietitians. That means they're not only delicious, but they're nutritious. There's over 34 choices weekly for you to choose from. You can upgrade to Gourmet Plus and they offer protein shakes and smoothies that are also delivered. You can add more than just meals to your package. That means you can skip the extra grocery trip, you can skip the meal prep. Factor meals are fresh, never frozen, ready to go in two minutes. You just heat them up and you get right back to achieving your goals. What else is there to say? Who doesn't want conveniently delivered to your door meals, ready to go for whenever you're in a pinch, or you just wanna get on top of your nutrition goals. I'm gonna eat this lunch right now, but if you wanna get on board too, you can go to Factor 75, or just hit that link in the description below, but use the code CORRIDOR50 and you'll get 50% off your first box. Great food, ready to go for 50% off, what's not to love? Just hit that link in the description, make sure you use that promo code, now let's get back to React. Have you guys seen Ted Lasso? Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all three seasons? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh wow, okay, yes. so this is from season two, episode nine, when Beard goes on his crazy, crazy. Uh, yeah. uh, tour through the night, uh -huh. as they say. Mm -hmm. Nowhere to go. So then this scene came out of nowhere. I remember being like, ha ha ha, Beard. Wait, that is Beard. <laughs> oh. Wow. I think. Beard was on wires, but I think there's a transition at the end to an effect shot or a stunt person. I think they stitched it. Mm. I, don't I think see there's a stitch. two jumps. I think there's two jumps. I've seen somebody do a similar test, having a performer perform this stunt two ways, and they're able to match how the arms are moving. I think the transition is right as it comes out of slow motion. If you watch his face really carefully, I feel like the beard disappears right at the last second, just a little bit. Right now, that's a new guy. Yeah. Wow, that's an expert transition. Yeah. Wow. The body transition was flawless. It was, it was really well done. I, uh, that's the stuntman. They're just that good. The stuntman <laughs> able to be like, that's how he moved his arms, that's how, he, okay, cool, got it. Yep, got the little flow with the mm -hmm. hands. So, but like that actual fall though, is he on wires and descending or yeah. is he actually dropping? I'd say they put him on the senders. Because it looks like he's falling full speed. Yeah, so what happens, even when you get put on the sender, they descend you for a certain amount of the speed, and then they treat it as if you're still jumping from 10 feet. Mm. So they'll descend it to that amount of speed for you, and then let you just drop 10 feet. Okay, so it's like a speed limiter. Exactly. I love this show, first off. I love this show. And this scene just came out of nowhere. It was like, haha, oh wow, crazy stunt. Right. <laughs> what? It's the perfect use of like, let's not go too ambitious. Let's keep it really straightforward. It's a one shot moment. And because the one shot moment ends up being really compelling and really like visceral feeling. You're going to die. Maybe not. Let's start to die. John Wick! We haven't spoken about this. We haven't spoken about John Wick 4. I think maybe it's because I'm like hoping that we can eventually get like Chad on the couch. I think we can. <laughs> so I want to start with just, I, I was like, let, let's do a little bit. This is Donnie Yen being Donnie Yen. He's playing this character named Kane who's blind and you kind of get a gist of how badass his character is. Man, he's so fast. How is Donnie Yen still so limber? How old is he? He's like in his 50s. Yeah. He's still very fast, but a lot of what's making him fast is like he's doing small movements. Right. And the stun guys are really selling the hits and they're doing rapid fire hits. Like when this guy gets hit in the face with the sword, Donnie Yen just kind of wiggles his hands like this. Pop, 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 pop. You know? Pop. But the guy really sells yeah. it. Yeah. And he sells it fast. He's whooping his head back and forth. Is there any like purpose to that type of kick? I feel like that would be really hard on your knee. It's an axe kick. He's using it, I guess, as an exclamation mark, similar to like Bruce's stomp. 
I mean, it would hurt your knee if you don't do it right. I feel like, now that I've watched it a couple times, I feel like he's actually landing on the bottom of his foot as yes, opposed to his heel. heel. Right. He's flat footing it. He's being nice. You would actually hit somebody with the heel, though. Give him a little the up. Ba -pow! Give him a little flashpoint. Like, he, they gave everything that Donnie N is known for doing in this fight. They gave him a piece of it, all of it, right? The big wind up. The thing we know from It Man is the rapid punches. He does all of it all. Bow! Connects it all together, which is really fun. And that's choreographing to your, your, your star, to your actor who's performing. And they overlap into what's basically wrestling characters with these actors is funny and strange, but in a good way. Right? Like, the fact they have signature moves and they have these attitudes, these characters they play. And even like, like here's my finisher, sure. the people's right. elbow. You know, this is his people's elbow. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> right. Ren, you should see the whole film and then we can talk. Oh, when when we get to. Chad yeah. here, we'll talk more in depth of all the crazy stunts that they did in this movie because it's literally an action film. Like, it's just a buffet. There's been something that's been living in my head, Nico. Something that bothered me as a kid. I want to see if we can debunk it right here on the show today. Oh, sweet. Awesome. The Musketeer has his final fight scene. Let's look at this ladder fight. Oh, that man just floated. So, like, the movie turns in kind of Wu Pingish. It turns into Wu Jia, kind yeah. of. I sense wire work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Whoa. Yo. I feel like it'd be so easy to just slip when you're landing on something like that and your foot just goes through the ladder. Uh, perfectly balanced. Uh, That's not exactly how uh, balance way the beam same. works, they but sure. <laughs> Even if you're fighting your mortal enemy, by this point in the fight, you'd be like, hold up, bro. This is crazy. What we're doing is crazy, isn't it? And they'd be like, yeah, this is bonkers. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> they just look at each other and like, yeah, it's sick. All right, yeah, let's like, get, let's get This is to really it. cool. <laughs> For some reason, I feel like I've seen this fight before or something very close to this fight before. And I think it's in Once Upon a Time in China. Just let's watch. Let's okay, see. okay, okay. All right, here we go. Am I a musketeer? Whoa, they split oh, the ladder. Oh, heck yes. Whoa, that's cool. Yeah. Climbing the ladder while it's like still falling over. <laughs> Escape move. Wait. I'm sure they're on wires. Oh, I actually saw a wire there in one shot. You did? Yeah. Right there. Yeah, oh, it was right I, there. I did you see it. it. I did see it. it. I never realized how much wire work is in old martial arts films. Like, I'd see stuff that's like, this is crazy. There's no way they did that stunt. And it's like little by little starting to realize there's magic tricks in every shot. And there is real stunts in danger, but it's more that there's like, it's physically demanding stuff. It's things where you have to be physically trained for it. Right. I mean, it's safe to say that the Musketeer was definitely inspired by this fight. Yes. The question is, how, how specific? Much fire? Right, right. <laughs> I'm waiting to see a balance beam ladder fight. Right, that's why I'm like, I feel like there is a balance beam. A little seesaw action. Oh. Seesaw. Oh. Oh. oh, here it is. Oh. Wow, <laughs> but it's like a freaking <laughs> teepee. <laughs> It's just inspired by. Yeah. You know what? I'll give Musketeer just a simple good homage. Yeah. 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 I don't feel like it ripped this off. It'd be very hard to rip this off. That's true. <laughs> like, if they could rip this off, be like, ah, whatever, kudos, good job. <laughs> like, <laughs> you just did one of the hardest scenes in stunt work. But yeah, so that was it. It was debunked. It turns out that the Musketeer was inspired by, it didn't fully just rip off, one of my favorite Hong Kong films. Thanks for, thanks for doing that with me, Nico. This is thanks, delightful. Man. This has been one of my favorite movies for some reason. For some reason. For some reason. <laughs> it just, it, it stays rent free in my head. Last Samurai is a good movie. Yeah, it's a great Tom movie. Tom Cruise, man. Tom Cruise. And this is like the son of the guy who he killed. So mm. this is like the kid's opportunity to beat his ass, right? Yeah. This is like revenge time. The kid's going though. He just catches it. Like, just, just, <laughs> like, we're playing, this is supposed to be sword fighting, and here you are grabbing the blade. And then it's like, words am I your own size? I love this actor here. He's so good. I love this guy. Jeez, went straight for the ribs. Ooh, across the face. Like, that would probably, that would take you out for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> he, what's the trick to selling pain? on camera. Like if you get punched, you're like, ah! Not not selling the hit, but like the pain afterwards. He's showing the effect of it, right? Right, like if you watch like an MMA fight, when somebody gets punched, they're not like, oh, yeah! You know, it's like, right, <laughs> like, like Jackie makes faces, he's like, ah! 
<laughs> what about the emotion in the face? So like if he, so let's say you have to sell it with an expression, like, and you're like, well, do you go the Jackie Chan route of going, eh? or like, what is the way to do that? Well, it depends on the character. So yeah. his character, for instance, he's supposed to be a soldier. So he shows that he's in pain, but then he has to show that he is going to overcome it. So you show the, oh, that hurt. And then the, I can't show you that hurt though. Mm. So it's the same with feeling of anger or emotion and not being allowed to show it. Most people, when they cry, they don't want you to see them cry. You know, like they immediately wipe it away. They don't just let the one tear drop like we see in all the movies. It's like, I'm vulnerable. So immediately I'm gonna show it for a moment, but then I have to get back into my strength, not show that. You hint at it, you don't go full Jackie though. You have to go like quarter Jackie and then pull it away from everybody. Mm. Ways that you do it without showing like the facial expression is through body language, which we see when he goes for the ribs for the first time you see that aspect. Well, also his performance here like evolves over the course of the scene. He gets slower and more tired, tired. to the yep. point at the end he's just, like barely even like throwing it, but he's still trying. Trying, exactly. Yeah. And that's where he pulls at our heartstrings here. This is how he wins over everybody, including the audience, as this man who is fighting these demons along with having to be a captive and earn the respect of the people around him. And that's like one of the biggest things that I care about when it comes to seeing a fight scene is how does it push us forward in the story or make us care about the character? Yeah, because especially in this movie where later on this pays off when he becomes an expert and is able to fend off an entire, entire squad, squad of right. sword Right, this fighters. is the start of that whole training montage that leads to him being able to withstand 14, 15 strikes and they're betting on him, you know? Make sure you guys subscribe to CorridorDigital.com where you can see an extended version of this Stub and Reacts episode. Yeah, that was great, you are a professional. Oh, thanks, brother. <laughs> it's been a while since we've done a stunt and react episode. It's nice to be back, just kind of looking at clips. Leave a comment down below for any cool stunts you want us to break down or ask other stunt people their opinion on them. We'd love to do so. Well, thanks for watching, everyone, and maybe I'll see you in the next stunt and react episode as well. Peace.